KDE and GNOME, two of the most prominent desktop environment projects in the Linux world, are stepping into new territory by developing their own official Linux distributions. KDE's initiative, codenamed Project Banana, aims to deliver a user-friendly, Arch-based operating system that focuses on stability, security, and modern technologies. With an immutable core, Wayland as the default display server, and a rolling release schedule, it's designed to provide a polished and secure KDE Plasma experience for users. This new distribution will differ significantly from KDE Neon, which is based on Ubuntu and serves more as a feature showcase rather than a full-fledged operating system. KDE's upcoming distribution will prioritize offering a stable, secure, and up-to-date experience with three distinct additions, testing, enthusiast, and stable. These additions will cater to different user needs, from those who want to experiment with the latest features to those who prefer a reliable, stable setup. Meanwhile, GNOME is working on transforming GNOME OS, which has primarily been a testing platform for GNOME desktop releases, into a daily driver for end users. GNOME OS will focus on providing a stock GNOME experience, using Flatpak as its core packaging format, and ensuring an immutable and secure environment. The goal is to support modern technologies like Wayland and Pipewire, providing a cutting-edge yet stable experience for GNOME users. While KDE's distribution will be based on Arch Linux, GNOME OS is likely to take a more independent path, possibly building on insights from Adrian's earlier Carbon OS project. This could lead to a unique approach that sets GNOME OS apart from other Linux distributions. These moves are significant for the Linux ecosystem, especially for users who are passionate about KDE or GNOME. By creating their own official distributions, both projects aim to offer the best possible experience for their users without relying on third-party distros. It could make the choice of which distribution to use much simpler for people who want the purest, most optimized KDE or GNOME experience. At the same time, third-party distros that feature KDE or GNOME will likely need to find new ways to differentiate themselves, as users now have an official, well-supported alternative. Both KDE and GNOME are still in the early stages of their distribution projects, but they hold the potential to reshape the Linux desktop landscape in the coming years. What do you think about these official distributions? Are you excited for KDE and GNOME to take this step? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.